Our very own Greg Varney wrote that song, and uh, we always know it's Christmas around here when we hear that song being sung. Just want to encourage you uh, one more time, take advantage of all the tools we are giving you to invite people to Christmas Eve. Uh, it's such an easy invite. Uh, people are looking for something to do on Christmas Eve anyway, and uh, I always feel like our program is so great. Um, there's a couple things you could do. You could grab a yard sign and put it in your yard or just put it somewhere where people can see it. And then there's a couple of uh, invite tools for you. Uh, this is an invite card. This is a ticket. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're going to take a ticket, that means you're going to take a seat. If, you, if you're going to invite someone and they may not know which service they're going to come to, like this service, this ticket is for 3 o'clock, um, you could just give them this and say, man, my church does an excellent thing on Christmas Eve, love for you to come. If they can't commit to a service right at that point, this would kind of point them to our website or they could call the church and get their ticket. But just want to encourage you to uh, make room for worshiping Jesus on Christmas Eve yourself. That would be a good thing. Uh, and then invite somebody to church with you. It's going to be uh, an amazing evening. Amen. Today's a great day. Uh, we are actually going to uh, write history a little bit later on in the end of our service. And uh, we're going to receive a Christmas miracle offering that's going to launch us into a whole new phase as a church. But uh, before we go into that, I just want to teach a little bit from the book of Philippians, the, uh, the series that we're entitled Joy. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about a concept that I think is pretty powerful that actually applies quite a bit to today. So Philippians chapter 2, just verse 12 and 13 says, so then, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now you've obeyed much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The title of my message today is simply work it out. Everybody say work it out. <laughs> work it out. So these couple of verses are helping us understand something about the nature of the way that God works uh, in our life and how we can cooperate with what God is doing in our life. God is at work in you, so work out what he's working in you. Um, there is within every person who asks Jesus Christ to come into their life a, a supernatural energy that begins to work inside of us, that lifts our life beyond just the natural and places us in a zone of supernatural. And that energy is at work uh, helping us both to will and to work. That energy is creating a, a desire inside of us. Uh, the will of God is for our life and the will of God is being formed inside of us by that energy. And then the, the, the idea is to take what God's doing in you and then to step out and start to do the thing that God's put inside of your heart. That you would cooperate with the divine energy, supernatural energy that's creating a fresh desire inside of you. But then also, you, we would be able to learn how to step out and obey in that same energy. So I want to say, starting off today, that it's so important to pay attention to what's happening in your heart. What's happening in you is way more important than what's happening to you. And, and if you want to find the will of God, some people are guided by circumstances. You know, just whatever the circumstances around them, whatever way the wind pushes them, uh, whatever way the waves push them, whatever way that life is pushing them, they let that guide their life. But God wants you and I to be able to lift beyond that and say, circumstances are not controlling my life. It's what's happening in me. And as I begin to walk out what's happening in me, that I can walk into the best that God has for my life. The book of uh, Philippians in the message says it this way. Be energetic 
in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you, God himself willing and working at what will give him the most pleasure. Be energetic with God's energy. I don't know where you find yourself today, uh, whether you feel strong and on top of life or whether you feel uh, underneath what life is throwing at you. But could I just remind us today that God's desire for us is to live a believer's life that is full of energy and full of strength. That energy and that strength is coming out of what's happening inside of us. Live a life of energy. Amen. You might express that by saying amen. <laughs> Live a life of energy. Amen. So when we worship, let's worship with energy. And when we obey, let's obey with energy. And when we move forward in the things that God has for our life, let's do it with energy and strength. The, the book of Colossians, there, there's a prayer that's in the first chapter of Colossians, and, and there are several things that are being covered, but I like verse 11. It says that uh, the Apostle Paul is praying that the Colossian church, and it's a prayer for all believers, that we'd be strengthened with all power, with dunamis power, uh, according to his glorious might. That you and I would live, not in our own strength, but in the strength of God. Strengthened according to his glorious might. The idea is not so much that you and I would be strong for God, but that we would learn how to walk in the strength of God. It's being strengthened with power, the power of his glorious might. Many of the challenges that you are facing in life are simply opportunities to exchange your weakness for his strength. Anybody facing a challenge today? Come on. Anybody alive on the planet facing a challenge? And the truth is, the whole journey is about learning how to, to say, God, I want to learn how to be strengthened. I want to I have your patience I want to have your love. I want to have your victory at work inside of my life. No matter what challenge is facing you, I just want to remind you of this truth about God. God is never interested in taking you down. God is always interested in building you up. And every challenge that we face is simply an opportunity to exchange our weakness for his strength. Somewhere in that is a place where you can say, I may not be up for this, but God is. I've had the opportunity to, to travel to quite a few different nations, and most of the nations outside of the U.S. Uh, operate on 220 volts of electricity. We operate on 110 or 120. And I remember one of the first times I ever went to uh, another country, and uh, I, think I, I think at the time I had a hair dryer. Yeah, shut up like you didn't. Some of you wish you could have one right now. That's right. So, so Jeremiah, stop laughing. I heard you say something up here. Don't laugh at me when I got the mic, son. That's all I can say. But I think I had a hair dryer, and, uh, and, I, and I wanted to to get my 1980s bouffant looking just right. And, uh, and I remember plugging it in, and, and I, I used an adapter, but I didn't use a transformer. So the adapter let me plug into a different kind of plug, but I had no idea what the 220 volt thing was. And all I can say is that hair dryer had the ride of its life <laughs> for, for about 20 seconds. And it died a happy hair dryer because it was like, <laughs> I, I, I like to equate that kind of thinking 
to us understanding that when you're living life in your own strength, you might be living on 110 volts, 120 volts. But in the kingdom of God, God's got 220 volts for you. God, he, he's, he, is, he is always at work trying to take us from the natural to the supernatural, where, where we are learning to depend on his strength and his power and his ability. And I would say not just challenges, but even opportunities that come that somehow in our spirit, inside of us, we know this is what God wants us to, to move into. Those are just opportunities to help stretch us, to get us off of self-dependence onto God-dependence. And even when you fail, even when I fail, that is ultimately not what God is after, but it's all part of the process that puts us on a different voltage. Anybody ready for that kind of life? So let me drill down in this for just a moment and, and, uh, and talk about some of these ideas because I, I think it, it's, a, it, it's a good thing to understand. The first idea that I want to talk about is this, that desire is a powerful force. Uh, the Spirit of God, the energy of God, uh, the life of God is at work within you and I to will or to, to, de to desire what God wants for our life. That's why I think it's so important to pay attention to what God is doing in your heart, to pay attention to what he's saying in you. He's at work in your desires, and that is something that the Holy Spirit does. Because how I many of you know this? You know, you, you, you used to love to do this, but now that you've become a believer, you hate that. Does that ever happen to anybody? I hope it's happened to a lot of us. <laughs> you know, I can remember uh, before I gave my heart to Christ, I used to be schizo I was so proud of how stoned I got the previous night. Anybody ever, like, man, last night I got so wasted. It was awesome. I know some of you are sitting there going, you know, that's what I was thinking this morning. Uh, <laughs> and that's true, then I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> but what I used to be so proud of, uh, now I have learned to hate because it wasn't just me trying to turn over a new leaf. It was God at work in my desires taking me to a, a new place where I would start to love what he loves and hate what he hates. And it all starts desire-wise. It, it all starts within you. And so the, what it could happen for you is this, is you could hear an announcement about an opportunity to go on a mission trip. And all of a sudden, you know, there's hundreds of people in the room, but in, something in you goes, ding, and you know, I'm supposed to do that trip. I'm supposed to go and take advantage of that opportunity. And that's why I say, pay attention to the things that are going in, on in your heart. Or maybe you feel drawn to a certain kind of ministry. You feel drawn to worship, or you feel drawn to kids, or you feel drawn to students, or you feel drawn to, you know, uh, outreach in our city, but you feel drawn because there's something, you hear about something, or something that comes across your radar, and all of a sudden, you just, something inside of you goes, yes. Can I just say that desire, that is the Holy Spirit working in your life, drawing you into what God has for your life. I, I listened to a, a podcast the other day where a guy was describing he has a, a church on Walt Disney property. Walt uh, Disney World in Florida has 47 miles, square miles of property. There's 67,000 people that work for Disney. And he was kind of in that uh, whole realm of being a cast member. They don't call them employees. They call them cast members. But... It, while he was in that, he just was drawn to minister to that group of people. And I mean, 67,000, that's not far from the size of Asheville, to be honest. And he just felt drawn, and he actually left 
uh, Orlando for a while, and, but he kept being drawn back. Something within him was drawing him to go start this cast member church to minister to them. That's how God works inside of our lives. Desire is the beginning of what God wants to do in your life. This church started with a desire. This church did not exist 30 years ago in the open, but existed 30 years ago in a desire. Amen. My, my marriage started with a desire. Can anybody have a witness? Come on, you, you meet all these people and like, okay, okay, okay. Wow. Right? That's what Adam said when he saw Eve. Wow, man. And you're thinking, this is the greatest girl that's ever walked the planet. Everything starts with desire. All the ministries that exist in our church and flow through our church all start with somebody having a desire. And the truth is, they all continue to flourish because somebody has a desire. Because how many of you know when desire dies, the church dies, the marriage dies, the ministry dies. Everything flourishes because of the desire that lives inside of us. I'm just saying to you today, desire is a powerful force. You, me, we will always move towards our strongest desire. If, if, we, if we desire progress, we'll move there. If we desire safety, we'll stay there. No one in life ever accomplishes anything great without a strong desire. You, you, you don't drift into anything great. There's got to be a fire inside of you, a desire that burns inside of you. You'll, you'll never really become a man of God if you don't have strong desire. You'll never become a woman of God without strong desire. You'll never become financially successful if you don't have strong desire. You'll never build a successful ministry without strong desire. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? You, you'll never build and maintain a strong business without strong desire. Desire is a powerful force. And that's how God starts everything he wants to do in your life. It's not what's happening out there. At first, it's what's happening in here. It's your desire. Great things require great desire. So God is at work, and the, the, the Greek word is energeo, to create his will, to literally create inside of us an emotional desire. His energy is at work to create an emotional desire, something that says, I want that. I like that. I, I want to move towards that. Psalm 37, verse 4 says this, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It's interesting to me. This verse, you could take a couple of angles, and I don't know that any of these angles would be necessarily wrong. But the word delight means to, to be soft, uh, to be soft towards the Lord. Keep a soft heart toward the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will, he, because when you love what God loves, God loves to bless that. But I think there's, a, there's an angle that's pretty important. And that is this, that when we keep a soft heart before the Lord, not only will he give us what we desire, but he will also give us the right desires, 
God's will for you is going to be something you desire. You're going to like it. <laughs> you, I think a lot of people will have misconceptions about this. You know, God wants me to do something that I'm going to hate. No, he doesn't. I know some of you are thinking, well, maybe God's giving me the ministry of eating um, entire chocolate cakes because I like that. <laughs> But I want us to get this. You're, if you keep your heart soft to the Lord, he will, put, he will start to create desires inside of you that you're going to like what you do. There, there are some people, they like to counsel people. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I don't get that one. But there are some people who like to minister to elderly people. They love that people group. They really care. And there's something in them that wants. I'm not saying, I'm not saying what God calls you to do will always be easy. As a matter of fact, I'm saying a lot of times desires are going to rise inside of you that are going to push you past easy. So all of a sudden, you're going to have to have, you're going to have a dream, you're going to have a vision, you're going to have something that you see that you go, man, I want to do that, but I don't even, I'm not even there yet, but I've got a desire for it. I want to be a, a worship leader. I, I, want to, I want to, you know, lead in a ministry. I want to start a business, and that desire is working inside of you. And a lot of times, what God is doing is stirring this thing inside of us so that that we will launch out into something that is beyond us, what we learn to plug into 220 instead of just living in 110. Desire. It's a very powerful thing. And the second idea that I want to talk about is this, is that this verse is telling us to work out in his power what he's working in by his power. The whole point of this verse is this, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your salvation with full respect for God. The call is to work it out. Not just let it stay in. To cooperate outwardly with, with what's going on inwardly. God works from the inside out. I, I've taught this for years and years, decades. I'll keep teaching it because I think a lot of people still don't get it. It's not what's happening around you. It's what's happening in you. And growing up in Christ is understanding i got to work out what's in me. I want to I make a strong distinction and have us understand this. This is not working for your salvation. This is working out your salvation. You can't do enough to work for your salvation. Your salvation is paid for by what Jesus done, did on the cross. <laughs> what Jesus done on the cross. I just speak for a living, sorry. It's... That you could never do enough to work for your salvation. But I think people miss it when they go, okay, well, that's true, then I don't have to do anything. No, the Bible says, hey, listen, work it out. Whatever, whatever's going on inside of you, work out your salvation. Don't work for your salvation. So th I, I want to urge some of us because I think some of us have gotten a little complacent and we just stop short with, I have this desire, I, I have this feeling, I have this intention. And can I just tell you that it's easy to fool yourself with a good intention? Because good intent, we often judge other people by their actions, but we judge ourselves by our intentions. 
and that desire is working inside of you, but somehow or another, it's, it's got to find its way into working it out. You hear what I'm saying? Just having the desire is the beginning. We got to move beyond our intention, beyond our desire. Here's what the Bible says into action. We're joining our energy with His energy. And I think this is, this is where we get, this is where the rubber meets the road on this idea. It's, it's this balance that we walk in, it's this tension that we manage that it's not all us, it's God at work in us, it's God at work through us, but it's also not all God because at some point you got to work out what He's working in. I've always looked at balance as like a, a pendulum, you know. Some seasons in my life, the pendulum is way out on the sovereignty of God, and I'm trusting on that. But there's some seasons where the pendulum swings this way, and God says, you need to get up off your butt and get moving, son. Anybody ever heard the Holy Spirit say that? Well, not quite like that, but... Sometimes the pendulum is way out on God's sovereignty, and sometimes the pendulum is way out at our choices. I think in all of this, what we can rest in is this idea. God is always previous. God knows just how much time you need. Some of us are fast. Some of us are slow. Some of us, you know, just run at a fast pace and we obey fast and, you know, we just we get on it fast. But some of us are slow. And there are some things in your life that the desire could start in you, and then two months later, you're, you're in it. But there are some other things that the desire could start in you, and two years later, you're in it. This church, even though it started in September 1989, the truth is it started probably four or five years before that. Now, there were other things that didn't, it weren't as big a leap for me, so that God didn't have to start on that early. But here's what I'm saying to you. God knows you, and he knows when to get started. He's the alpha and the omega. So if he's ready for you to do something great in 2015, and he knows you're one of those fast guys, he'll just start you today. But if he knows he's got something great for you in 2015, and you're one of those slow ones, he knows he's got to start back here in 1995. I want to encourage you to understand that you don't have to worry about being behind schedule if, if your heart is soft before the Lord. Don't worry about, oh, did I miss God? Come on, desire is a powerful thing. It'll move you to a great place. I, I, want, I, I, want, to, I want to shift gears just a little bit, and I'm going to ask Suzette to come up here, and uh, I want to share some thoughts with you as our church is going to move into something really strong and powerful today. About a year ago, uh, this idea started floating around in me. What if we were to build a building from scratch that could fit the church that we are today? Instead of trying to fit our church uh, into the building that we built almost 18 years ago, what would happen if we said, okay, we're not the same church anymore. What would happen if we just rebuilt? You know, this McDonald's that's right up here, you don't have to admit you go there, but you do. Uh, this McDonald's right up at the corner is, is really one of the highest grossing McDonald's. Grossing is a good word, isn't it? Uh, is one of the highest grossing McDonald's in the nation, which says a lot for Candler. Uh, but... <laughs> And since our church has been here 17 years ago, we, we moved into this building, they have torn that McDonald's down twice, like to the bone, and rebuilt. And I, I know, and I just start, I think about this. If they would go to that trouble to sell hamburgers, what could we do to reach people for Christ? Yeah. And so it just started, it was the beginning of a desire. 
inside of me. So I started kind of poking around and I uh, found some names of architects and designers and started making phone calls and just trying to see where this was. And you, some of you can remember, we even considered for a while filling in the walkway between the two buildings so we didn't have our kids and their parents having to walk through the freezing cold. And um, we looked at it and just ditched the idea. The estimate came in at 350000 We just thought, nah, it's not worth that. We need to wait and have a project that's 10 times that. Uh, that's that's out of what we were thinking. And then I read an article by a guy, just came across an article uh, by a guy who turns out to be a facilities consultant. I never knew they even had that. I didn't know that existed. But I've just got this thing, this little desire, this thing stirring inside of me. And so we started the journey, uh, contacted this guy, and we started talking about what was going on. I started dreaming. I started talking to our team. We started pulling leaders from our church in. And all of a sudden, we just, we just kept moving the ball down the field, just waiting, just seeing. I was paying attention to the desire that was growing inside of me. We met with architects and just started to put plans together. And, but, and all the while, uh, I'm listening. Uh, 20 years ago, I probably would have just said, come on, let's do it. I've learned to listen a little better. Aren't you glad? Amen. Amen. Learn to listen a little better. And all the while, I'm just going through this thing, and I'm, I'm listening to my heart. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm listening to the team around me, our staff and our le- some of our leaders in church. I'm just listening, just feeling this out. And, and, and I'll, I've got a theory, I think, about how the will of God takes place in our life, is that it, when you start to sense a desire inside of you, then just, it's always a green light until you get a red light. So just keep moving forward till God says stop. So we said, hey, we're going to move forward, fill in the space between the two buildings. We'll reach a point where we just thought, no. So anyway, we went through that. And we came up with these, these plans, uh, this, the new building that we're going to build. Uh, that's going to be the front, uh, how things are going to look. We're going to have some outside area for us to hang out and connect. Uh, we're going to put, uh, move our kids' ministry more up front, move Adventure Rock between the two buildings. We're going to rearrange the sanctuary. Uh, we're going to have it so that the lobby is going to be three times the size it is now. Uh, it just be a great place for us to meet, to connect. Even now, there's just no room in our lobby anymore. You come in, worship on the left, uh, kids rock on the right, check in. We're going we're gonna to move Adventure Rock and put our teen ministry, our student ministry back there. So it's, all, it's just a huge project. It's, it's a big project. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so as this all began to develop and materialize, I just, I just kept feeling like this is God, this is yeah. God, this is God. And, and, uh, uh, and so I, uh, I finally, I just, I just knew uh, that this was God's idea. This was God's plan. And just the way our church started with a dream, with a desire, I've seen every chapter of our church start with a dream, start with a desire. Uh, and so, so you know, you, some of you guys know the history, but, you know, we started out meeting in a little hotel conference room, and, uh, you know, then we moved to, uh, to um, Tunnel Road Office Park. This is actually a Turtle Creek, but uh, we moved to Tunnel Road Office Park. Here's Suzette and I leading worship. You can be glad you weren't here in those days. Uh, but uh, actually, it was great worship, to believe it or not. You know, we're still here at, at, uh, at Turtle Creek, and we just knew it was time to, to, to buy a piece of land. And so we bought this land, um, and uh, we began to, uh, to build on it. So bulldozers out here, and this is the building that you're sitting in now. We outgrew this building. We, you know, we, we built the annex uh, to house things. And now we just know we're just at a different season, and we're so grateful for what we have. I mean, I know some people would go, gosh, aren't, can't you be happy with what you have? I am happy with what I have. But I'm also happy yeah. for something greater for yeah. the glory of God. Yeah. Anybody there? And you know, every move that we ever made, I, I just want you to know they were all faith moves. Uh, uh, it, the money wasn't in the bank <laughs> for any of those moves. Uh, but what we did is we just said, God, we're going to make room. We're going to make spaces. And, and I'm grateful when I think about the fact that we made spaces for over 13,000 salvations. Anybody glad about that? Come on. You know, 
We made spaces for countless God moments. We made spaces for children and spaces for teens and spaces for marriage and spaces for people to get touched and healed. It's kingdom builders, people that have joined in to help write the story so far have been what helped us create these spaces. And here's, here's what I want to say to you. This is today, but this is not just today. Now it's our turn. Yeah. Come on, everybody say, it's my turn. It's, my turn. it's our yeah. turn. This, it's our turn it, to, to move into the new day, the new season, the new chapter that awaits us. And I just I want to encourage you to understand that business as usual will not write the next chapter. Uh, God is at work to will and to do, and, and we're saying to our church, hey, listen, we got this thing going on inside of us, and we're stepping into a new season of, of praying, of serving, of leaning in, of, of giving a new season of God dependence. I believe the best chapter, the best chapters of our church are yet to be written. And so today is the beginning, if you will, of working it out. Uh, and today is the day to bring a seed that moves us forward in what God has for us. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you guys that I felt like the Holy Spirit had put on my heart. And I would say, Kirk always sees a green light instead, unless he sees a red light. I'm the one, I see the yellow light, like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> let's wait a minute before we step into this. Go, oh, okay, it's green, I better go, or somebody's going to honk at me and get me moving, you know? <laughs> and so we do, we vary so much in personality, but, but I do know that God came in and he began to speak to me, because to be honest, the first time that Kirk had shared this with me and with our team, I thought, oh boy, here we go. And, um, and, I, and I knew that there was, there was this thing inside of me that went, am I ready for this? Do I want to do this? You know, because um, I know what moving ahead can be, you know, can be stretching. And it was a lot of stretching for a lot of us, stretching for us. You know, it's, it's putting our finances into it to make it happen. And it's a lot of work. I mean, a lot of work. And I, and I thought, am I really ready for this? And, you know, I went into prayer about it. And I really felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and to, and to begin to call me into that place of faith. And, and, you know, just even the last couple of days, and most of you may know that our daughter Elizabeth and Jonathan are about to get married next month. Mm -hmm. And so, so they found a little apartment. And Kirk and I have been there, and we have been scraping, and we have been scrubbing, and we have been painting and moving things around. And how many of you know it's messy? You know, I find myself sweeping constantly and wiping constantly, and, and Kirk's down on his knees, you know, painting, getting the line exactly right, you know, and it's messy. Me, I would like to just move in and just do the, the decor. You know, let's just hang curtains you know, and, and bring out the flowers and, you know, all that kind of stuff to make it look pretty. But I know there's always some messiness involved. So now, needless to say, there's a little caution in me, but the Holy Spirit just began to speak to me. And you know what? Kirk just shared that, that God wants to work out what is being worked in us. We've all been totally had our lives changed in this place or you wouldn't still be here. Right. We've all been transformed in many powerful ways in this place. And so I, I felt the Holy Spirit to speak to me, and he said, I'm going to take you from, you know, we've been in a season of peace for the last few years in our church, and I love peace. Mm -hmm. How many of you like that? Yeah, I just love peace. I know God's going to mess things up a little bit, you know, but he does want to take us out of our comfort zone. And that, that's one thing I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me is that he never wants us to just become comfortable with what we have, right. who we have. There are still thousands more people for us to reach for Christ. Yes. It's, ne it's not about me anymore. Right. It's about people out there that need a touch, that need to be rescued right. and, and reaching people for Jesus Christ. And so the real value in us moving forward is going to be honestly in the stretching yes. and it's going to be in who we become. 
To tell you the truth, he and I are not the same two people we were in 1997 right. when we built the first couple of buildings. And there's ministry happening not only here on Sunday morning, but there is ministry happening in people's lives 24-7 around here yeah. in both of these buildings. Yeah. And Amen. we get to be a part of that. This is the place where people come and they connect with God and they connect with each other. And then the purpose of God gets fulfilled in our lives. And so I just want to share one more thing is that I really felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that we have a mandate from heaven. And you know what a mandate is? It's a command and it's an authorization. And we have that authorization from the one who considers this group of people able to do this and able to minister to our city and able to take Western North Carolina and make Asheville a praise in all the earth. And we get to do that. That's the greatest cause on the planet. And so I just want, want to say thank you to every one of you guys who believe in the vision, who believe in the call, and who are gonna walk with us through this process to see God form something beautiful, just like, you know, when when Elizabeth and John move into that apartment, when they're gonna start their new life together, it's gonna be a place that's gonna be them. Well, this is gonna be us. Yeah. And we're gonna do it together. So thank you guys so very much. Amen, awesome, beautiful. Thanks, son. All right, so here's how we're gonna do this. Uh, we're, we're going to give everyone an opportunity to bring their offering and bring their tithe forward. Uh, so our ushers are going to come and, and bring some containers for us. Uh, if you designate your offering as Christmas miracle offering, uh, those of you that are kingdom builders, this goes towards your kingdom builder pledge. Um, and if you don't designate, it's just going to be, we're going to consider a tithe uh, and we'll be able to use it that way. But, uh, but I just, I would encourage you, and you know, if you're brand new to our church and you don't really know what's going on, uh, I'm not putting any pressure on you. I'm not putting pressure on anybody, really. Uh, I'm believing that the Lord is going to speak to our church, to the soul of our church, and that we're going to move into a brand new day. But I am asking you, if you are a part of this church family, that you will do your very best. Is that okay? You do your very best. So uh, let's all stand together. Uh, these containers are right here. Uh, we're asking you, as we, as our team leads us in worship, uh, we're going to bring our offering up front here, drop it in here, both offering and tie together. So let's worship the Lord together. <laughs> 